Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be using my latest stencil with not too shabby wacky web and showing you how I created this fun galaxy background. I hope you'll stick around, see the new card I'm going to create and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Earlier this month, Not Too Shabby had a special mini bundle release called Spooky Sweet, and I did a project share of some cards I had created. Up on screen now are a look at those, and in that video I asked you if you wanted to see any of the techniques that I used. Well, there were a couple that you wanted to see, so I will be stopping by to share those with you. Today, I'm going to show you how I made this galaxy background using some inks, some paint, and the new stencil I designed for Not Too Shabby, Wacky Web. Even though I will finish off today's card a little bit differently, you're still going to get to see that technique. Now if you weren't able to snag one of these kits and this stencil before it sold out, I will tell you that you can use this same technique with stencils you might already own and it could be for a completely different season. I will make sure to link below any single items that are still available from the bundle if you're interested in checking them out. And while you're at the Not Too Shabby store, I do also have a 10% off coupon code in the description box where you can get 10% off most items. And not only do they sell their own products, but a wide variety of other popular companies as well. Now as I start the process today, I will tell you about other products and tools that I use, but as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to start out today by ink blending with green and purple onto a piece of smooth white cardstock. Now because these two colors would normally make brown if they were mixed together, I will be blending in from the sides and letting it go really light or fading out in the center. To start off, I'm going to use the green ink and I do usually clockwise and then counterclockwise motions from the outside edge all the way across the piece. Once I've done that a couple times, I then use that same green ink and I did a little bit more saturated color toward the outer edge. I rotated this around and did the same thing with the purple ink and you'll notice here that I'm helping hold it down with a sticky note. That's just so I don't get ink on my hands and then spread it to parts of the cardstock that I don't want it on. So here's a look at the ink blended piece after those two colors. You'll notice that the center is pretty much white, but the colors do touch just a little bit. Now we're going to start creating that galaxy effect. To do this, I will be using Gina K Designs Onyx Black Ink and my gray blending brush. What I'm going to do now is get my stencil put onto the card front. You could set your card portrait or landscape, totally up to you. I did decide today to go ahead and place mine down portrait like the original. And to hold it in place, I'm just using some blue painters tape that I've taken a little bit of the tack off of. Then all I do is just go back over that piece of cardstock covering the entire front with the black ink. I use the same motions as before and I just layer up that ink until I like the way it looks. It's going to end up being a little bit gray, not completely black and that is cool. But when you do have the shade of gray or black that you want, that's when you can remove the stencil and look at that beautiful background. 
I will be using a black card base for this card, and since I'm going to need a piece on the inside to write my personal message, I thought I would kind of clean off my stenciling brush on the inside and give it a little bit of decoration. So to do this, I just placed the stencil down pretty much like the previous piece, and now I'm just going to use the ink that is left on my blending brush and blend from the bottom up to the top until I think all the ink is gone. And you'll see here now, I just have that slight hint of the wacky web in the background. Now you could totally leave this background as is and it would make an awesome card, but I did want to add some splatter to kind of give that starry night galaxy kind of background. So to do this, I got out some white acrylic paint, a little mister, an acrylic block, and a splatter brush. Now you don't have to use these tools. If you have a way that you like to splatter, you can definitely do that. For me, I'm gonna put my card front into the box to protect the area around it, because I did this the other day without it and I'm still finding paint splatters. And then I add a little bit of paint to the acrylic block and I spritz it with some water. I mix it up as well as I can there with the brush and when I think I have it all mixed up and a good consistency, I'm just going to tap it on my finger over the card in the box. And once it starts kind of splattering, I fill it up with more paint and come back and I cover it until I like how many splatters I have. So that is completely up to you. Now I'm going to set this box to the side, let that piece dry and we'll move on to the focal point. I will be decorating this card a little bit different than before. I'm going to be using the Spooky Sweet stamp set from the mini kit and I'll be using the gnome with the little boo banner. Now as of my voiceover time, there are just a couple of these left. So if you're interested, I will have the link in that description box below. I'm going to be coloring the little gnome in using alcohol markers, so I did bring in my Memento Tuxedo Black ink for the stamping. So I can ink it up and stamp it a couple times to get a nice solid black. I did set the stamp up in my Misty. I will be coloring the image off screen with my Spectrum Noir Tri-Blend markers, and even though I won't show you the coloring process, I will list the colors that I'm using in the description box below. Here's a look at the ink blended piece once that paint had time to dry. I almost think it looks like the view through a starship window. I brought in my trimmer so I could cut this piece down. I did want a small border on the card front. I ended up taking a quarter inch off the top and an eighth inch off each of the sides. Then off camera, I used the Cat Scrappiness A2 Frames die set to die cut out a little green frame. Also, while I was off camera, I cut a piece of vellum to fit behind the opening, and now I'm just going to add some art glitter glue to the back of the frame and adhere the vellum to that and let it dry for a little bit. Speaking of drying, here is a look at my gnome that I had colored and I also added some glossy accents to her banner, bow, and that little spider on her hat. I learned to do this from Letty of Party Planner Papery and I cannot stop. Now that all of the pieces of the card are ready, I can start putting it together. I adhered my ink blended piece to the front of the card base, and then I added my piece of white cardstock to the inside. For my little vellum frame piece, I decided that I wanted to pop it up, so I brought in my thinnest foam tape, but I still needed to cut that in half so it would be hidden behind the frame. Once I had that all set around that, I knew that I wanted my gnome to go in the center of this piece, and so I knew where I could add some more foam tape to the back to just help it stay up off the card, I went ahead and adhered down my gnome. Then I placed some more of that foam tape behind it. I then wrestled a little bit with the release paper, which I spared you from having to watch, but once I did that, I added it to the front of the card, now the reason that I used vellum was because I still wanted you to be able to see the galaxy in the background, but I wanted the gnome to stand out as well, so the vellum helped that a little bit. To finish off the card, I brought in some black enamel dots and added a trio around the frame. 
And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.